today's video, we're going to create a thing called a variant link. What it allows you to do is to create a body. And with that body, you can set up parameters so that you can have variations of that body. And then you can create sub binders that actually hold um, the possibility to change to those different versions of this. So in my case here, if you look at this is a completed one, we'll, we'll come to do the, um, we'll do the whole thing together. But basically this is the body right here, and this is, two of these are different versions. I can go in here, and I can simply change which version I want for one of the binders there, and you'll see it automatically changed it. So you can have multiple copies of the same thing with variations of that same thing too. So it's quite, quite a powerful way to represent things. If you need things that are variants of a size, in this case I'm showing hex nuts, but it could be anything you wanted it to be, uh, with as many parameters as you want it want to have, um, then you can create those different versions, and then you can use these sub binders to locate them anywhere inside your model. So, without any further ado, let's get going. Let's show you my version of FreeCAD 0.21.0 is what I'm using. That's my latest version. I haven't looked at the download today, but I'll probably download a later version if there is one uh, that's been released uh, for the next video. For this one, we're gonna stick with what we got. We're gonna start a new file, uh, and I'm gonna go right from the very beginning and we'll work from there. So let's close this one. And we'll close this. We'll save those changes. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we will create a new file. And for those of you who have my macro, you can just go in here and do the startup macro and pick the XY plane for your sketch. It'll be perfectly fine. For those of you who don't have a macro, I constantly get people saying, oh, you lost me because you used a macro because they don't look at the earlier videos. So for this one, I'm just gonna do it manually. So you just press new file, and then we're gonna press part and body, and then I'm gonna save this file as variant link. link and then I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane say okay that one I'm going to do this one and go from this middle and we'll go out here and we'll just connect it out here then I'm just going to draw a circle in the middle again from that middle let's put it out here I'm not going to dimension it or do anything to it right now First thing I'm going to do is close that, and then I'm just going to create a pad from that. And it, and it really doesn't matter what the thickness is because we're going to set some parameters for that. So that's our basic shape. It's all done. Very straightforward, very simple to create. Nothing special about it right now. It doesn't have any parameters. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the spreadsheet workbench. And if you don't have the spreadsheet, I can't remember if the spreadsheet workbench is automatically installed or not in version 0 0.21. If it's not, you can go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and then you can add um, that workbench. So once you have that workbench, you can hit a new spreadsheet. And then what we're going to do with this spreadsheet is we're going to give the columns some names and we're going to do that just so that we keep everything straight here so we'll do that so in this case we're going to call this one variant diameter if I can hit the right key let's take my fingers slightly off <laughs> diameter width 
across corners and thickness. My variance, so I'm going to actually go down to the next one. So we're intentionally leaving row two blank. It's important that we do that. Okay, so we're going to call this one M10. And the diameter of that is going to be 10. The width across our corners is going to be 18.5. And our thickness is going to be 8.5. And then on the next variant, we're going to call it M12. And the diameter is going to be 12. And it's going to be 28. And it's going to be 14 thick. And these, you can change these, of course, as a spreadsheet, you can make it anything you want it to be. Um, now, the next thing is something that may be new to you. So you right click in any of these cells and it says configuration table. So you're going to right click in any cell and you're going to click on configuration table. It's going to pop up the cell range. What we're going to do is we're going to tell it that it's A2 through D4. So we're going to go. A2 to D4. And then we're going to tell it our property is going to be body dot configuration. And then we're going to just say OK. Now we have our spreadsheet with our configuration across the top. Notice that blank line is now filled with our configuration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to alias these. So we're going to alias this one to be diameter. Again, you can use the macro to, to alias them, but I'm going to do them manually so that everybody is on the same page. I'm going to alias that one as diameter. I'm going to alias this one as width across corners. And I'm going to alias this one as thickness. Done. And that is our spreadsheet done. So I'm just going to hit save. Just so that everything is saved. And you can see our configuration table is pretty simple. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our model. Go down to the tab down here. Pick our model. Go into our pad. And we're going to edit our sketch. And now we're going to put some constraints on here. So we're going to put this diameter on. And we're going to give that a link. It's going to be spreadsheet. And it's going to be diameter. So there's our diameter. And then I'm going to give this one a dimension across here. And that's going to be spreadsheet width across corners that's what we want say okay say okay so there's the first variant it's actually into the 10 millimeter variant and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to close that and then i'm going to go to my pad and i'm going to say my um, length here length number one that is going to be spreadsheet thickness and there we have it so now this um, body is set up and configured to use my spreadsheet and if we go into the body you'll see there's a configuration here so I can pick either M10 or M12 so I can I can change the body's configuration. Now I want to create two um, sub binders. And I'll show you how that works. Pretty straightforward. You go to the part design. And so I'm going to make sure that my body is active, right? So I want to make sure that's an active body. And then I'm going to create the sub binder. And 
Oh, I gotta double click there. I'm just gonna delete one of those subbinders. There's my subbinder. And then I'm gonna move this subbinder onto this variant link, the actual file. I'm gonna move it up there, and that puts it outside of this body. Then I'm gonna take this body and I'm gonna drop it on top of my binder. Now what that does is if we go to the binder, you'll see the support is now set to this body. So the support is set to the body. Now, one thing that we have to do with this is to make our bind copy on change. We have to enable that. So that is now, oh, that is enabled. Bind copy on change enabled. Now, if you look here, there's no configuration yet. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure my toggle my active part. Make sure it's my active part. I'm gonna create a body. And then what I'm gonna do is just take this binder and drop it inside this body. So now I have body 001 that has this shape binder in it or this uh, sub binder. And now if we look at that binder, it has a configuration property. The other thing that these binders have is a placement property. So I can go into my placement and say my position and I can move that so I can see it. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna move it on the Y axis just so I can see it here. So now you can see my sub binder and the original model. And then if I want my sub binder to be the configuration of the M12, I'm just gonna pick M12 and there it is. Now it looks like I just need to move that a little bit further away because it's touching. Let's go ahead and do that. And there you have it. So now I have the sub binder and the original model and I can create as many of these as I want. So I can, I can go back to this body and toggle it to be the active body, create another sub binder. Then I'm gonna move that sub binder onto that variant link. Then I'm gonna take this body and drop it on top of that sub binder. So remember that that allows you to create the support of the part body into this sub binder. I'm gonna set its copy unchanged to enabled and I am going to move away from that binder to my part. I'm going to create a body. So now I've got body 2 I'm going to drop my sub binder in there. And then when I look at that, I can see I have a variation. I can also move that one as well. So I'm going to do that. We will change its position. Placement and position and Y, and I'm just gonna move it the other way. So now they're in a line, everything is visible. And of course, I can change its configuration to be M12 as well, to give me back exactly what I had at the beginning of the show. And of course, now you see these sub binders are actually transparent. So what we want to do is just change them. I'll show you how to do one and I won't show you both. I'll just show you one. So right click on it and select appearance and the shape color. You want that shape color to be silver, right? The same as that other one there. So what I do is I just change it to bronze and I come back to default. It'll automatically change it to silver. And then I'll change these line colors to be black. And I'll change this to be two. And I'll say, okay, okay, okay. And now it's the same looking as this one. And I'll leave you guys to do that one yourselves. So there you have um, variant links. These shape binders are now linked to that spreadsheet and you can create uh, multiple copies of that you can create multiple sub binders 
And of course, you could have more than two variations. You could have 10 variations if you want to do a spreadsheet that's that complex. That's entirely up to you. So hopefully you've learned something new. I know for me it was uh, an interesting thing. Somebody had put something in the forum about how to use variant links. I went and researched it on the wiki and that's basically they use these hexagons as their um, view. I have to admit what's on the wiki, I tried to follow it. I couldn't make it work exactly like that, but I figured out how to make it work in a fairly simple way. And I think this is something that you could use if you wanted to create something with variants. Remember, we've done a couple of videos now on different ways that you can use FreeCAD to create variants of um, models and to be able to use those models in different ways. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done it, would you please subscribe to the channel? I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm struggling a little bit because I find about 75% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribing. Subscription is free, it doesn't cost you a bean. You can subscribe to as many channels as you want, so it's not exclusive. So if you want to subscribe to mine and anybody else's, you certainly can do that. But I just appreciate it. If you would subscribe to mine, it means a lot. It will help me to grow the channel. Uh, and when I grow the channel, that helps me because then I get more um, opportunity to work with uh, folks that um, are willing to sponsor videos, etc., and helps me to defer the cost. One of the reasons that I haven't been able to produce as many videos as I like is I got to do my day job because I got to keep the lights on. So again, appreciate it. If you do want to contribute to the channel, feel free to join my Patreon, or you can become a member of the channel here, or you can buy me a coffee on coffee.com. I'll put all the links down below. And there's probably links popping up in this video right now. And you can go ahead and do whatever makes you feel good. So I appreciate it. And if you do anything cool with this technique, feel free to share it with me. And if you have any questions, as always, if anybody puts a comment, I always respond. I don't think there's been a comment that I haven't responded to. So uh, if you have a comment, you have a question, feel free to, to pop it down below. Uh, for my patrons, of course, if you have questions, do it in in Patreon or on the uh, YouTube channel, and and I will certainly prioritize um, helping you guys. So thanks again. See you in the next one.